So, Alan, you've, c- you've come in today and you've passed me over a CD of something very, very special. Can you explain to me what this is? Well, this is a series of recordings done at the rehearsal and coaching sessions that my father did with um, Shane Fenton and the Fentones. And it was prior to their uh, sending an audition tape off to Brian Matthews's Saturday Club. Sending it down to the BBC. So tell us a little bit about your dad then. How come he was recording this? Well, my father was a friend, a close friend of Harry Theakston, who was um, the father of Johnny Theakston, who started off the Fentones. Well, it was Johnny Theakston and the Theakstones, I think, or something similar to that. Unfortunately, Johnny died due to a congenital heart disease. So uh, Harry asked Bernard Jury to take over, and that's how it started Shane Fenton and the Fentones. Harry was very, um, very much, he wanted them to carry on in, in the name of his son, didn't he? That's correct, yes, yes, definitely. Because he, he was very much a musical man, wasn't he? Yes, he was a pianist originally, and then uh, he went on to organ, and he actually played at one of the venues was uh, Shybrook Manor's Welfare, which is ironical, because when he finished, I took over. So your dad recorded this. Where did the recording take place? Now, they did several sort of venues where they went round, but as far as I can remember... It was in the buildings of the old meeting house. I think as you go up off Stocklegate, you go up this little driveway, I think I can remember putting equipment into, I think it was a schoolroom or something similar to that. A long while ago, you know, it's a bit vague, but uh, they did some rehearsals and recordings there. How old were you at that time? I was, it would be 1960, I was coming up to nine years old. But I was dead keen in music and uh, sound recording and that at that time because my father uh, sort of a sideline cut discs for local bands and local artists so he actually had a machine that did little records for people exactly yeah wow so he was the man to know if you were in a local band you'd you'd want to get close to your dad yes so you were nine and you were helping your dad out with the equipment tell us about the equipment itself what what did he have well he had uh, he had good quality equipment obviously needed it he had a uh, a ferrograph mark ii uh, tape recorder, reel to reel. Most of the recordings were uh, for the technical bus, done at seven and a half inches per second. And um, he recorded most of the stuff using uh, a Reslow River mic, which is superb quality. And then he had a, a disc cutter, I can't remember what the manufacturer was, but I can remember as a youngster when he was cutting the discs that we had to be very careful because he did it in the front room and the front room had a wooden floor so we couldn't go banging around or dropping anything otherwise it would have affected the recording. The Fentones were doing their practising and they were having parts of their performance recorded so they could send it down to the BBC. Yeah, Harry, Harry asked my father to uh, go in there and do a little bit of coaching with him, music coaching and performance coaching and uh, we took the uh, tape recorder down. It's much easier to play it back and explain what they've done than uh, than just telling them. No. Well, little Willie, you better get back in school. Oh, well, little Willie, you better get back in school. I don't mind you playing hooky, but you talk about a mirror.
They would play the song and then they'd listen back and say, right, you need more bass here and the drums need to come in here. Exactly. And that's what your dad did. That's did, yes. Wow, amazing. So, Alan, how come this bit of audio now is suddenly in my hands <laughs> some 62 years later? Yeah, well, my father passed away in 2008 and obviously we kept all the tapes and everything and um, now is the only time I've really had to uh, have to go through them all. I mean, it's quite a lot of tapes. I mean, obviously, this is this is a gem. I yes. mean, an absolute gem and, and a, a piece of Mansell music history. Mm. That particular tape that you've got and this copy that I've got here in my hands. But what else, what other things was he recording at the time? Well, I, c- I can remember we've got some recordings of uh, Al Needham and his big band, which is, I think, a Chesterfield band. And we recorded that in, I think it was the restaurant, over the top of the winding wheel. Uh, as it is now, it used to be a cinema at that time. I can remember going with him there to help out. And later, I believe, and this is how it sort of ties in to the Granada, mm. of course, on Westgate, as you became the organist at the Granada. That's correct, yes. And you also used the same equipment to record some stuff down at the Granada. Tell us about that. At that time, we changed the, uh, the, the recording system to uh, a much lighter machine. And uh, after the uh, children's shows finished, uh, or during at that time uh, my holidays, I used to go in early in the morning and, and do recording sessions. This is you recording the actual Wurlitzer organ? Yeah, yes. Yeah, not many recordings of it uh, were about, and I've just discovered a complete tape that I'd forgotten about, which was probably some of my best, best performances. Well, I hope they will share that with us at some stage soon, because yes. that's the, we would love to have the, the organ actually on, on the website, as you know. Thank you so much for bringing this in. It's a pleasure. I really, really appreciate it. And I know as well that you did capture some of your performances during the Saturday Kids shows as well, so we should be able to get some cheering kids at yes. some stage. I've found one recording at the moment on a, a small tape, but of uh, the children singing back home, which was in 1970. But uh, they weren't singing in the same key as the organ had originally started in. Uh, when you've got five to 600 children singing away, you know, uh, everything is in the air. But this is this is so special, though, isn't it? I mean, this is Ma- Mansell's premier band in 1960. Yeah, Shane and Fenton's, they, they were, you know, the bee's knees. And it's quite a privilege for me to be in there. They're getting sort of like, like echo on the voices. How how are they managing that? Yeah, they used uh, an echo chamber, which was tape based, and I'm not 
I think, or well, I can't be guarantee, it was a Binson Echoette uh, echo chamber. Uh, I don't think it was a Watkins echo chamber they, did, they used, but I think it was that. But it just made that professionalism. It's like adding reverb to recordings we do now, but that echo was a common thing used by artists in, in clubland um, regularly to just improve, improve the quality of the environmental sound. So they've basically they've set up their kit. So they've got their little PA set up. Yep. They've got this little echo chamber on their mic. On on the mics, yeah. Yeah, and then you you're at the back end. Your your, your mic is in the middle of them somewhere. Yep. At the back, two thirds back from you know the length of the room, so it picks up everything around. And yes, it was uh, relatively the Resolo Ruben mic was relatively narrow pickup. Uh, range on it so it didn't pick up any side noises but came at the front technically it had a figure of eight uh, reception on the uh, how it received the audio Take rumble in the background, but but yes, the top's quality, and you, you can tell who's singing. Yeah, and I have to say, they sound very much like Cliff Richard and the Shadows. Yes, yeah, but I think that era, the early 60s, everybody was trying to do that. And then if you've got solo artists, well, you want to sound like Burt Whedon. So there, there you are. It's the sound of the era. Well, definitely the sound of the era, and, and you and your dad captured it. Yes. You must be pretty proud of that. Well, yeah, it was quite good at the time. You don't realise, you know, but uh, as you sort of think about it now, um, yeah, it's not bad.
about that, Walt? 